G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. In today's episode of in-store sessions, we're gonna be showing you how to catch fish. Now this will be a particularly useful video for anyone that wants to work in an aquarium store. However, it's also a very useful skill to have for anyone with a reef tank. So let's talk about how we catch fish. We have a fairly basic artillery of nets as well as a number of bags. Now the choice of nets and the choice of bags for the fish that you're catching is particularly important. So what we'll do is we'll look at some fish that we need to catch out of the tank and exactly how we go about doing that and then how we bag them up. The fish that we need to catch out of this tank today are the cleaner wrasse, the choats wrasse and a pair of clownfish. So depending on exactly what sort of fish I'm catching will dictate exactly how I go about catching it out. Now I'm going to start with the cleaner wrasse because if I can get the cleaner wrasse quickly before it knows it's being chased, I do have a chance of getting it in one scoop with one net, but the other fish I'll probably use two nets. I'll show you the techniques and some considerations as I go. So let's start with the cleaner wrasse. I have a square of frozen brine shrimp and I'm just going to put it up the top here and hope that the fish come up. Now we have uh, two people standing over the tank right now and we've got lights and it's also uh, there's other lights on that aren't normally on and so he's a little bit scared so I'm hoping that he feels comfortable enough to come up to the front but let's see. All right, so that didn't work. When you're lucky enough to get it in one go, it does make it very easy and very stress-free, but it means I'm gonna to have to go in with the second net. So when I'm using two nets, I'll get rid of that food. So when I'm using two nets, I'll typically use one as a trap and the second one to chase the fish into. So I'll just chase him round from the back. Okay, chase, 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 and then into the net. Now, it's very important whenever you have a fish in a net that you don't pull it through the water quickly. That's an extremely stressful thing for the fish. And something else to consider is the type of fish that you're catching out. There are some fish that you don't want to catch out with a coarse net like this one. Uh, for example, uh, Antheus uh, will sometimes get their teeth hooked on a coarse net like this, so we use fine nets. But in this case, uh, the coarse net has worked well. We have some sand in the net that I'm going to remove. So what I'm actually going to do is use the second net to catch our wrasse out. And that way I've got less sand and then I'll go back into the other net. All right, so now we've separated our cleaner wrasse from the sand. I'm gonna get the bag and we're gonna bag him up. It's a very important consideration to choose the right size bag for the fish that you're uh, bagging up. Now I've got a medium size bag, which is about right for a fish like this. And what I do when I'm actually putting the fish into the bag, I'll orientate it so that its head is facing forwards so that it just basically goes head first into the bag. That was a little bit lucky because he jumped, but head first into the bag so they slide into the bag and don't get hooked uh, on the netting. So there we have our cleaner wrasse. The amount of water in the bag is also very important. So typically we go for one third water and two thirds air. You need to ensure that you have the maximum amount of air possible so that the oxygen level of the water uh, stays as high as possible. So let's bag this one up. There are two ways that we can tie a fish bag up. The first is without oxygen and the second is with oxygen. So we'll tie this one up without oxygen. Now the, the goal is to trap as much air as possible in the bag. And you can see this bag has got a seam down each side. You want those seams to be opposite each other. So we hold the bag like this and the seams are lined up and we hold it at the very top. And this allows us to put the top together to then fold over a few times like so. And once we're at this point, you can see there's a lot of air in the bag. We then bring 
this folded section together, clamp it with our hand and twist it. And this ensures that there's maximum amount of air in the bag. I'm then gonna get a rubber band and I actually do a little trick with the rubber band in that I grab my pinky, pulls it through, and it actually passes to my index finger so that my index finger pulls it through, which means that it's looped on itself in a way that when I go backwards around, it tightens the bag. So we go around, and then what we do, we fold this top down and we put it like so. Now, the idea of this is that that bag is totally secure, but when the customer takes the fish home, they're able to very easily pull up on the plastic, very easily, <laughs> in a way that this comes down, the rubber band then undoes, and they're able to take the rubber band off, and if they choose, they can reuse the bag, and acclimate the fish from there. So that's how we tie up a fish bag without using oxygen on top. So let's catch our next fish. The next fish is the choats wrasse. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try and pick a time when the wrasse is at the front of the tank so I can get behind him with the nets and stop him from going into the rock work. So exactly the same. So I was a little bit lucky, he's gone straight into the net. Often what I'll do is I'll use my hand to scare the fish into the back of the net. It's important that the fish is facing towards the back of the net when you bring the net up because you don't want to be dragging the fish through the water quickly and you don't want the fish to jump out of the net forward. So having him facing into the back of the net is important. So we're going to use another medium bag. This guy could almost be in a large bag, but uh, we'll use a medium today. So again, I'm ensuring that his head is facing forwards into the bag and very gently releasing him in. So, actually that's, that size bag is perfect. So let's tie this guy up and we'll use oxygen. When you're lucky enough to have oxygen on tap, it's quite an easy process to tie up a fish bag. So I've got my rubber band here ready to go. I put the oxygen into the bag and gather together the top. I don't worry about lining up the seams when I'm doing it this way. Uh, I just ensure that I've got a good hold at the top of the bag and very carefully, I fill the bag with oxygen, remove the oxygen gun and twirl the top. And then I do the same process with our rubber band. Now let's see, I'll do it a bit more quickly this time. All right. It's also important that you don't stress the fish out. So I'm holding the bag in a way that it's not all over the place and you can see he's quite calm and relaxed, um, but definitely you don't wanna swing the bag around like crazy. The whole process is all about the safe travel of a fish from one tank to another. So every step of the way, you have to consider the welfare of the fish. But this is our oxygen bag tied up. You can see we've got our little lift top again. So that's our choats wrasse. So now let's catch out the clowns. These clownfish are quite small, so I'm using small bags. I'm going to have them ready here because often when you're choosing out fish like clownfish, customers can be quite particular to ensure they get the fish that they want and that's fair enough. This fish is gonna live in their tank for possibly 30 years being a clownfish. So it's important that you're careful to uh, choose the fish out and the way I would do this with clownfish is I would bring them all to the front so you can see I'm kind of keep them as a school and from the front, let's see, okay. Well, I've got enough that a customer could make a choice. So I'll put them all in the bag like so. And from there, I would then choose out, I'm gonna go for, 
So I've actually got my iron one. I'm laying some of them out because I'm after a particular one. Okay, it was that one. <laughs> I almost put them out. All right. So I'm using my second net and I want this one with the black on its fins. This one here. Oh, okay, that one there. So we've now got our first clownfish picked out. He's quite small and really the trick is just to ensure that he doesn't get caught on the net and then into the bag. And the second one, I'll just choose out this guy here. All right. It's a very important consideration to ensure that you don't leave the fish out of the water for too long, that you check your nets to make sure that there are no fish in the nets once you've finished. There's nothing worse than losing a fish because you haven't checked your net. And we'll put this guy in here. So there's our two clowns. Uh, the, the size of the bag is totally appropriate for the size of the fish. And we'll bag these guys with oxygen and they'll be good to go to their forever home. That's how we catch fish when we're using nets. Now, there are some species of fish that you can't use a net to catch it out of the tank. And probably the best two examples are porcupine puffer as well as lionfish. Now, with both of those examples, I would use a container. And the way I use a container is similar to when I'm using the two net system. I chase the fish with a net into the container being very, very careful, of course, with lionfish, they're venomous, so you do not want to get stung, but into the container, and then the container comes up and is then used to put the fish into the bag and go from there. But the reason why we do that is because lionfish, porcupine puffers, they will become trapped in a net, which is extremely stressful if you have to remove the fish from the net out of the water. But the vast majority of fish Nets are definitely the best option when they're used correctly. So that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Hopefully you've learned a little something about how to catch fish out of your aquarium. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. There we go. That's how you do it in one scoop. <laughs> that's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Product TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!